and welcome back to the Boxing Cornerstone, where this is round number three. And with us joining us is Howard Grant, retired boxer and professional trainer, all the way here in Montreal. Howard, are you there? I'm here. How are you, Don? I'm doing great. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to leave the forum and the ring to uh, the light moss. Steve, take it from there. Howard Grant. <laughs> hey, what's up, Steve? How you doing, my brother? I'm okay. I just been watching the boxing with the with the, a guy from Quebec and a guy from Kazakhstan, and we end up losing the decision, but it's okay. Uh, you know, be, be, before we get Simon started, King, uh, we watch yeah. Simon King. You saying Simon King? Yeah, we watching Simon King probably fight against uh, okay. Dojkovic. Okay. Yeah. Did you get a chance to hear the early part of the show? No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. I was okay. going to say, uh, what do you think uh, uh, the the fight with um, Boutte and Froch, that last moment before he got knocked out, reminded me of? Well, you know what? Before, before the fight even took place, I did call Froch win before nine rounds, and everybody laughed at me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know... Considering this guy was coming out of the Super Six and he fought all the best guys, and he's like, uh, he's a street fighter. I love his chances to win, and the fight was also in Nottingham. Mm -hmm. So that, that that was my that was my pick with the fight. I picked fought to win the knockout before nine, and he did. Uh, okay, okay. Um, it, it, I was gonna say it reminded me uh, a little bit of a fight that you had with somebody that you represented several years ago. And I don't know if everybody here knows uh, uh, the fighter's name or who I'm talking about, but I'm talking about Lebrano Andrade. Uh, you remember that fight, Carl? Yeah, when he fought uh, Andrade and had the controversy, how was the coach? And, uh, and how Howard and got suspended for five years because he beat up the Five record. years? No, three, years. Actually, no, three months. I was suspended for three months because I went in and I pushed the referee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and rightfully so but, but Don Zeno I mean uh, I've always had a tremendous amount of respect for Howard I've had a tremendous amount of respect for Otis uh, I actually met Howard trying to sell uh, his brother a fur coat when I first came uh, then I had the pleasure of of, of working with Howard and um, uh, and Otis uh, when when I sponsored or co-sponsored a um, public training out at John Scotty's. And at that point, I met some of the boxers that he was working with other than his brother, George Shane uh, uh He had a number of boxers that were all contenders on champions. And I also had an opportunity to meet John Pascal at that time. Howard uh, is, a, is, a, is a remarkable trainer. When he came to one a session that he was jumping rope. You know how a person jumps rope on their on their uh, on their knees. He was jumping rope on his knees, uh, and I always thought that Howard, if he would take a step in a different direction, could probably be not that he not that he isn't already recognized as one of the best young trainers in the world. Now I'm gonna have to contend with him because his country is kind of like <laughs> red hot right now because of this. This, this this athlete and I was asking Howard earlier today. Uh, I've tried to sell Howard a lot of things, energy bars, energy energy drinks. He's real, really concerned with what he puts in his body. And I noticed that the the, the coach of or the way um, Boat trains, uh, he doesn't use all this fancy equipment. He is just just concentrating isolated spiritually mentally and physically on for the most part what's produced out of jamaica is there something special uh, how it actually going on in jamaica with the diet or with the land that actually I, helps I, these athletes i think i think you know in my hometown in my in my place of birth my parents place place of birth, my brother's place of birth, my grandparents' place of birth in Jamaica. I think the athletes in Jamaica, especially in the 100 meters, the 200 meters, the 400, the, uh, the, field, the track events, they're more hungry. 
Okay. You know, they, they, they want to have success. It's like the Mexican fighters. The Mexican fighters don't have the tools like the North American fighters are, but how come they always produce such good, good fighters from Mexico? Mm-hmm. With limited, with limited amount of uh, a tool that they have, they're hungry. They're hungry to eat uh, filet mignon or steak or caviar or lobster with their family, you know? And I think it's the same thing for Jamaica, you know? It's embedded in them since, it's embedded in us as Jamaicans since we're kids. You know, I was very emotional yesterday watching the final, uh, watching the the, the semis uh, and, and the final because they were showing the kids running from there like three years old in school, and that's what my brother and myself were doing. You know, we're reminiscing about it today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is something that's embedded in them as kids. You know, uh, it's a poor village that we're from. We used to run to school, race your neighbor to school, race your brother to school, race, race anybody to school. Mm-hmm. So I think it's I think it's a bit of a, a hunger now that uh, you know they they have achieved what they have uh, especially if you saying both I have an utmost of respect for this guy and for the for Blake and for Safa Paul because they live in the country they train in the country they don't leave the country to go to the states or Europe to train mm-hmm. they'll go to the states to see doctors or to Europe to see doctors but they train at home and everything is done at home you know so I think. And, and, all and, these the women too, and the women too. <laughs> and the women too. And the women too. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And the women also. So, you know, the whole team itself, they stay in Jamaica and they train. Okay, now let me, let me ask you something. Okay, so we're, we're saying, I, I, no, no disrespect, we're saying that somehow the word soft comes into play. That, that, um, that um, not so much progress, let's say progress has damaged those people that at one point really needed and were hungry, they needed it more then than they are. are you saying that, that the boxers, uh, I'm, I'm not talking about the Jamaican, but I, I'm going to say, like, say, say, was it that Sugar Ray Robinson, is it that Sugar Ray Robinson can exist today? Is that, is that what it is? There's, there's no, no, I will never, I, I will never, I will never disrespect or speak bad about the fighters of yesterday that, 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 that paved the road for the fighters of today. You know, Sugar Robinson, you go way back. Let's talk about a guy like uh, Ray Leonard. Okay. A guy like Marvin Hagler, a guy like Aaron Pryor, a guy like Wilfredo Benitez, a guy like uh, Salvador Sanchez. Okay. Uh, a guy like uh, Muhammad Ali in the 70s, you know, in uh, Roberto Duran. Okay. I'm saying yesterday, 30 years ago, let's only go back 30 years ago because 30 is not that far, 30, 35 years ago. Okay. The fighters of yesterday, they fought the best at their best, and they were hungry. Okay. Today, these, today, the fighters that I see, they don't have the hunger. They're looking for sponsors. They're looking for this. They're only fighting for money. And not only in boxing, this goes for football, this goes for basketball, this goes for hockey. This goes for all the, all the professional sports. Okay. You don't see no more franchise no more. The guys, they're too greedy. You know what I mean? These guys are signing contracts for $180 million, like their doctors saving lives. It doesn't make sense. You know, they don't have the hunger like they used to have. Mm-hmm. You know, this is why, this is why uh, heavyweight boxing is dead in the States. You know what? If you would have said 25 years ago that all the champions of the heavyweight divisions are going to be Russians, you know, you could be arrested in the States because at that time they were saying, you know, these Russians, these communists, these this and that, without respect to the whole communist system. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But today the hunger is not there like it used to be. Mm. Is there uh, a guys. is there a solution? Is there well let, let me ask you this. Now you're 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 obviously we're all in Canada. Yeah. Uh, forget forget Canada. We're all in Quebec. Um and people have a tendency to say, well, you know, the the reason the guy's a champion is because he has he hasn't fought outside of Quebec. Um, well, yes, go ahead. You're speaking about a certain individual or other individuals. Am I speaking about what now? Are you speaking about one particular individual or other fighters? In no, Quebec? I don't want to. I, I don't want to name. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to name any names. You oh, know what I mean? You're talking about fighters in general. I'm talking about I'm talking about current fighters who are from Quebec yeah. that either were champions last week or two years ago that are that are no longer champions. 
And and well, well I'm, I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna speak about the recent champion that we had in Tibet, which is uh, Bhutte. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you what what Interbox, the company, did with this guy. They built a phenomenal uh, base around him. Mm-hmm. They adopted him like a Tibetan, which really is a Romanian. Mm-hmm. He spoke the language. He can articulate with the public, and they love him. You know what I mean? So basically, with me saying that. Bhutte made more money in Quebec than he would have made in the States. Absolutely. Because basically, the hometown guy, he's got the right people around him, he's got the French media around him, his promoters, they control the media and everything else. And they did an absolutely phenomenal job. He left Quebec, he went to England and also had territory, and he got beat, you know, which, which, which could happen to anybody. But take, for example, my guy, when I had Josh Austin, we went into Bridgeport, Connecticut, in hostile territory, and we beat the champion of the world. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's from England. I think he's what up the last guy that went to England and won a title from mm-hmm. Canada. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's from England, fought against Ryan Rhodes in 1997 and beat Ryan Rhodes in England. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, uh, but we were in England also for six, seven weeks to training camp before the fight. Mm-hmm. Was, so, was, so was, was, was Joe Asheen the first? I, mean, I know Joe Asheen was the first Haitian ever to be a, a world boxing champion. That, that's a fact. He's the first Haitian. Yes. Um, yes. Is, 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 uh, you, you, you saw him fight David Lemieux. Has he changed? Has he come back to mm-hmm. close to where he was when he was with you? I, it's hard for me to say. I can't, you know, I can't compare apples and oranges. I mean, uh, David was there. David was knocking everybody out. He really didn't fight anybody. He was, he was supposed to be the, the uh, what, you might, what, what do you want to call it, the next coming of whatever... You know, yeah, I know that he lost Rubio, but he was supposed to be the next, you know, the next king of Quebec, and he ended up losing right, right, to Jewish right, 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 Gentlemen, right. we're going to, I'm sorry to interrupt you. This is a great conversation. Folks, when we come back, it's the last round here on the Boxing Cornerstone with our host, Steve the Light Moss, his right hand man, Carl Handy, professional boxer and trainer. And our VIP guest this week happens to be Howard Grant a retired boxer and professional trainer. Please stay tuned because when we come back, I've got the VIP question to ask Steve Moss. More when we come back. And we're back here on the Boxing Cornerstone. I'm Don Emilio Zeno, and uh, with us, uh, joining us, Howard Grant, retired boxer and professional trainer, Carl Handy, professional boxer and trainer. Wow, all this great talent coming to you from the Boxing Cornerstone, produced by the man, the light, Steve Moss. Thank you, Don. I I know you want to ask me a question, but I'd like to... I want to ask Howard, uh, both Howard and, and Carl, the question, and, 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 and I'm just I'm going off of vision and what, and what I see. Um, historically, Cuba had a, uh, a legendary amateur program. And you, yeah. guys see, you guys see amateur fighters and professional fighters all, all the time. Now, is it... Is it is the future of boxing, I mean, in, in, in sports in general, the Olympics is an amateur undertaking to some degree, but the United States basketball team is all pro. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're certainly not playing other comparable athletes, maybe, maybe not. But is there room for the elevation of a of the amateur program so that it is not necessary to turn pro so quickly would that give us an opportunity uh, opportunity to see greater athletes that's a very tough question because i think it's like a, a basketball player a college football player that's provoked by these contracts to go to the nfl or the nba you know mm-hmm. or or a boxer uh, uh compelling a very good amateur background and then a promoter comes to him and offers him the money. And, you know, some of these guys are ghetto guys. They're from the road. And, you know, they, they never have this kind of opportunity to make this kind of money. So, basically, they just uh, they say, you know what, yeah, we gotta go. We have to go to the pro game because maybe tomorrow I might continue playing college ball or, 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 or and, and get hurt, and that's going to be it for you. know what I mean? But 
on the bo- on the boxing aspect of it, I think I think the the, the amateur boxing has gone backwards, and not forward. Uh, you know, they got this computerized scoring system. I like I said, I was just watching this fight with this kid Simon. He lost a fight something like uh, twenty to six. You know, it's all computerized. Yeah. Three, three judges have got to touch a button at the same time for one score for, for the point to score. And mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I look at these guys and I compare myself. I was in the Olympics in '88, and I look at a guy like Lennox Lewis compared to these guys. Lennox Lewis, Lennox Lewis well, killed two. I agree yeah. with Howard because, like, I work with the amateurs, and I'm be honest with you, working as an amateur coach, I don't, I don't even understand the rules and how they, how it goes because they change it every tournament, every single tournament. There's new rules. It's a new scoring system. It's like they're trying to find themselves basically yeah. is what they're trying to do. Okay. And Carl, you're absolutely right. I think they got to go back to the old system of the three judges or five judges that scores it like, like a professional fight, this computer, I think it's, uh, it's absolutely obscene. It, it, it's stupid. Yeah, they're they're trying to find themselves. They're trying to find, I I think they're just trying to find some solution to this problem because, I mean, I've been here for like five years working with the amateurs and and Howard, I'm sure you know, every tournament, there's something new. Yeah. Every single tournament. There was a fight in the Olympics uh, three, four days ago when, when there was one fighter that got knocked down five times and he got up and he still ended up winning the fight. And still, exactly. He still ended exactly. up winning the fight. So, I mean, you know, uh, there was another fight when they were holding and holding and holding and they took the point and the guy they took the point from won the fight. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, that Terry it's hard, Cuban, it's huh? To graduate. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's like graduating from, 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 from university or from college to university, from the university to the pros. But the graduation, the graduation in the boxing is backwards. They, 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 it's very difficult for when these guys leave the amateur program to make it as a good professional, unless they, unless they fight like professional fighters. You know, they touch and run and touch and run and hold and touch and run and hold. Exactly. And, you know, it, it doesn't make sense, you know. So when the, a lot of the guys that leave their good, good, very good amateurs, leave the amateur, leave the amateur pros, go to the pros, and they can't make it because when they got a guy steaming on their neck and they got to fight on the inside, they don't even know how to fight on the inside no more. And that's a basic trait that you learn in boxing when you say you got to learn to fight inside, outside. outside yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's, I agree. It's nothing like that, you know. So basically, I think I, th- I think you know, like because because you know you you know what I have to say about this. So that that'll be for another show. But I think. Um, uh, we agree that there is room for improvement, and uh, and uh, what what's what's happening is that you really don't see great fighters, uh, as Howard said, go from theoretically go from from high school to university to the pros, and you know something about them all the way up. You know, you just mm-hmm. all of a sudden this guy just pops up and he's fighting for the world title, and he's from Yugoslavia. You know, and he's mm-hmm. gonna fight somebody for world title. You don't even know who he is. You know. Well, the difference is, the difference is, Steve, in North America, you know, we have a system that's been instilled in us for, like, you know, uh, for a long time. You know, you got to fight. In Europe, the system, the amateur system works because, you know what, when you fight in Germany, Germany is like a, is, it has a, like a channel on the boxing in Europe. They okay. do this touching and, touching and moving like in the amateurs. And you know what, the people applaud it. They love it. They, they stand up and they clap and they love it, you know. I got you. The, the, the system that we have here, like, you know, you got a guy like Mike Tyson coming at you to take your head off. You know, the people want to see the blood. They want to see guys get knocked out. They want to see this bleeding. You know, they want to see, like, two gladiators in there. In Europe, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit more different. They like to see the finesse of the game, like the old Russian system in hockey. You know, you know, pass, 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 no hitting on the board, no running the guy on the board with the, with the, with the cross check. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's different. What, what, what do you do? What did you think of that Super Six tournament? Is that the way to go? Uh, you know what? I think I think they, 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 the Germans deliberately started this tournament because they thought it was going to be uh, Kessler in the finals with Abraham. But Andre Ward messed everything up, and Andre Ward was the best kind of tournament. I think it's good to a certain extent, but it was much, much too long. This thing was like two years and a half. Yeah, two years and a half. 
you know, and the titles were tied up, and you know, I mean, the title, the, the only title that was that, the only title that was out there that was the Ravens of Piper was the IDF. Right. The WB was tied up. The, the IDF and the WB was the only two titles. The, the WB and WBC. They were all. They were well, the all tied already up. had the Ward had what WBA or WBC. Yeah, WBA. Yeah. 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 And, uh, what, 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 what do you what do you see right now as the strongest division? Uh, uh, you know, I'm biased towards bigger fighters, but is it? I'm, I'm going to ask you about a bigger division. I'm, forget the heavyweight division. I'm talking about light heavyweight or super middleweight. I want to yeah. ask you a question about about um, Danny Garcia and his relationship with his father, uh, Angel. Seems to be a, a fresh introductory. An introduction into the into the way people perceive a a, a father son relationship in boxing. Yeah, well, you know, I was I was at that his last fight when he knocked out Amir Khan because I had a I had a guy that fought on the card and we ended up winning. But uh, you know what, the father talks a good talk. He try he gets in the head of the fighters and the father goes out and do do the job. And I think the father kind of provoked Amir Khan and you know he said, "Ah, oh, in your country." In Pakistan, there's no fighters in Pakistan, which he insulted the guy. And he said, there's no Muslim fighters that's any good, you know. So it provoked him. And Amir Khan got out of his game and he ended up getting knocked out in uh, four rounds. But, uh, okay. you know, I mean, father's son has been around forever. Roy Jones was with his dad for a long time. And, uh, you know, wow. look at here and check. We had the whole thing that was with their dad and this and that. But, you know, I mean, it's. Another thing that those in the, you know, the fighter is the one that's fighting, the, the father is the one that's talking. There's no, for me, there's no room for the trainers even to get involved and start disrespecting the other fighters. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not that type of guy. You know, I just want my guy to go out and do the job, you know? But, uh. What about, Vir what about Virgil's relationship with Andre Ward? Virgil. Virgil. Ah, you know, I, I really don't know, you know what I mean? It's, you know, Andre Ward for me maybe is the second best fight in the world next to Floyd. You know, he goes out there, does his job, and I and I will pick him to beat Chad Dawson. I think Chad is a good fighter, but I think Andre's got some skills. Uh, and it's going to take somebody really, really special to beat this guy because he's really, really talented, and he's only got like 25 fights, 26 fights. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, gentlemen, about the best gentlemen, gentlemen, hold that thought. I just want to make uh, one live mention. Joining us next week, thanks to uh, Steve Moss's uh, unquestionable connections, we're going to be interviewing Richard Steele, world-renowned referee. Richard Steele, the man himself, uh, here on the Boxing Cornerstone next week, next Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Help us spread the word to your family and friends. Follow us on Facebook under A. Stefan Moss, A. Stefan Moss, and help us spread the word that the boxing history has started again with such greats as uh, Carl Handy and Howard Grant, retired boxers, professional boxers, training. You know, and I have a last question that I'm addressing you fine gentlemen as a as as a as a fan, as a boxing fan, even though, uh, you know, I'm not a boxing expert, I am a fan. Why is it that we can't see some good boxing every week that, you know, it only has to happen once in a while, like once or twice a year in every major city? Why can't every city hold a boxing tournament every week? There's so much talent in every major city. So, uh, gentlemen, that's the wrap-up question that I have for you guys. Well, I, I think personally, like uh, in the old days, you had fighters like Ray Robinson, uh, Archie Moore, all these guys. They they had many losses. They it, it didn't. Th that was their job. You know, you lose fight, you win, you lose. That's your job. And you can lose a fight today, and you can go win the championship next week. But today is like everybody want to protect that goose egg, that zero, you know, to, to, to say to their friends, I guess, or to their homies or to the, their loved ones, oh, I'm undefeated. I'm this big guy. I'm, I beat 30 guys. But you look at when guys fight all these nobodies, and as soon as they fight somebody, the proof being the pudding, they get their butts kicked because they haven't been tested. They're scared to take chances. They're scared to take challenges and learn their craft. 
They want to get yeah. that in a in a situation where they're sure they're gonna win. They know they go. They know they're gonna win. Instead of getting the gym, busting your butt, breaking your back, working hard, getting ready, and when you get in that ring, you expect to win. You don't hope to win. You expect to win. But don't nobody want to do that. Hmm? Gentlemen, 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 the bell. This is the uh, fitness <laughs> round number four. We have a unanimous decision, and the heavyweight winner here is all of you guys. Thank you for being <laughs> a lot. on the boxing Thanks, cornerstone. And, uh, gentlemen, please, please, we're hoping that you'll come back to us upon invitation by Steve, the light moss, who's a fresh, fresh material here on the VIP internet radio.com. Steve, any last words of wisdom for us all? Well, I want to, I want to say that I want to say to Howard, I don't want him to think I'm, I'm, I'm stepping on his toe. He is the man. Uh, <laughs> I, I, appreciate him, I appreciate him coming on the show and allowing me to stay in Quebec. Uh, and, and Carl is just, uh, you know, we, we two homeboys. So I think that, uh, uh, when we get off the radio, not tonight, but we're going to talk about something that may make a difference in the way boxing is perceived up here. I agree with uh, uh, both uh, uh, Howard and Carl is that we really need to do something about the drain, uh, the sports drain period that takes folks out of the community. You know what I mean? Uh, Jamaica is much different. In other words, the sports drain is not taking the athletes out of Jamaica. And as a result of that, Jamaica is just it's incredible, man. Almost made me cry last night, you know what I mean? Because it's, uh, it's like the, Jamaica is like the neighborhood used to be in the United States. You know, we always knew that somebody in the neighborhood was awesome. Now the bell, the bell. Know. Sorry, guys. This is all the no time problem. we have. No problem. As they would Thanks say, a lot, everybody. I'll see you next week. Uh, the long okay. time to go, folks. All right, ciao. Stay with us, guys. Stay with us. Like the great Muhammad Ali would say. I, I float like a butterfly and sting like a bee, and we's about to make history. God bless you all. Come back to us next week on the Boxing Cornerstone with Steve the Light Moss. God bless everyone.